Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And our topic for this week is about text and trims and how to ensure that they're going to get trimmed on your machine. And so if you're ready to get started, let's go ahead and um, bring up my Floriani workspace nice and big. Now, I will say this is not um, the perfect video for somebody to get started with text. And I will say that in the RNK Software Club, there are excellent videos on text. I know that there's a series that we did, you know, a one, two, three, learning everything about text. So if you're looking to start, start there. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the space between the letters, you know, and how to control when your machine will trim that out and when it will not trim it out. And you can take control of that. It's one of the settings in our properties box when we select our text. Um, so if you select your text, I want to point out that we have several tabs in the properties box that you, you know, may or may not need to adjust uh, based upon all sorts of parameters, I guess. But the first one is obviously where you enter your text. It says my text, but you can enter in here any text you want to. You control the size, the spacing, the letter style. Um, a lot of information can be controlled from the first window. But there are some extra settings on what's known as the text extra tab. And that is the second one with the text, the T with the little plus on it. So if I switch... Now I have, first of all, the sewing sequence. So left means starting at the left and sewing to the right. We also have right, which would mean starting at the right and sewing towards the left. And we have center, which would mean starting in the center and sewing towards the right and returning to the center and sewing towards the left. So also known as center out. Um, so we also have in this area an, a setting for the trim type. And the options are always, never, and auto. And you have a setting for the lock type. And the choices, again, are always, never, or only if there's a trim. So if you set the trim type to auto and the lock type to only around a trim, then the software gets to decide when they happen. But by default, they will be set to always and always. And you can tell they're turned on because when you look at the text, and you have your 3D turned on, if there's no uh, thread between the letters, that means it's set to trim the thread. Um, note that if you turn off the 3D, you can see a thread between the letters, but it's shown as dotted lines, and dotted lines means those are jump stitches, not needle down stitches. They'll be needle up, you know, just jump, jump, jump. And so there's... Um, when you turn on 3D, they're hidden. So the jump stitches are not part of the finished embroidery. So um, that's how you turn them on. Now, I do want to point out, just coming back to this text extra, that there is an option here called auto color characters. And that option will turn your text, you know, that'll ensure there's a trim because it makes each letter a different color. And so it'll actually make your machine stop in between each letter. Not only that, but it will trim because of that. So that is one way that you could force it, you know, on any home machine, regardless of the way the, the trim happens. But the reality is, and let me just undo back to single color here. When you sew this on a typical uh, multi-needle or industrial machine, the trims are handled by a trim code and the software puts the trim code in so that it knows to trim. And in a lot of the home machines, the trims are handled by either the number of jumps or by the distance in between. And so for the number of jumps, I want to also point out if I turn off that 3D and I also turn on the needle points so you can see, notice that in between the Y and the T, that there is a series of one, two, three, you know, jump stitches. But notice between the T and the E, where there's also a dotted line, there's also a series of jump stitches. So if you have a machine that is act, the trims are activated by a series of jumps, this is already set to trim. So really the only time that I would think that this wouldn't trim would be on a machine that has trim set by a mathematical distance. So it would probably trim between the Y and the T, but perhaps not between the T and the E. And so in that case, 
you may want to learn how to increase the distance between the letters. And there's more than one way that you can do that. Um, if you have, and I wanted to select this text and point out again um, on my text extra, you might have noticed an option here called connection type. Well, Floriani FTCU by, dis by default is set to closest. And this option is not available as part of FTCU by default. But when you add lettering master to your FTCU, it gives this a few additional settings. And this is one of them, um, the ability to change the connection type. So notice I can select this and choose closest, but I could also choose furthest or as digitized. So if I choose furthest, now the software will change the connection type and it will go from the furthest distance from the T to the furthest distance on the E as its entry and exit points. And so that is something that may not be available to all users, but I wanted to show it because it is one of those things. And this is one of those times where it's kind of nice uh, it, to have that extra professional level. Now, if you didn't have that, could you still do it? Well, absolutely. So let me point out, and, and I also want to show before I move on, as digitized may be slightly different than furthest distances, as digitized will be the way that the letter was created by the original designer. So it looks like the M finishes here and the Y starts there, the Y finishes there. So those are the as digitized choices. And you can set that if you have lettering master, it becomes, you know, available within, you know, your suite of software and you can choose which time, which one you want. So I use closest join. And then a lot of times what I will do is I will let the machine not trim the thread out and make my letters close enough together that it looks okay. So yes, I want the thread trim between the Y and the T, but if I wanted the thread to not be trimmed between the T and the E, then I might select my text and choose the um, option for trim type to be auto. So when I choose auto, and then I can also choose my lock type as only around a trim and click apply. So now the software will analyze the design and it will say, well, the distance from the Y to the T should be trimmed out, but the distance from the T to the E could be left in and the machine will simply keep sewing. And in this case, um, my feeling is if that distance is small and, and usually if it's smaller than the column width of the letter, it can be almost unnoticeable and you just simply leave it in. And in a production environment, you know, in the commercial world, that's how it's done. A lot of text is left with the connections together. So if you want to ensure that they trim in between, that is where, uh, that is actually the default setting. And you select your text, you come to your properties, the default setting is always trim and always lock. Now, trim means the machine trims. What are locks, Trevor? You see, the lock is, if it's going to trim at the end of the T before it jumps over to the E, after the last stitch of the T, it will put in one, two, three, four stitches. And you can, if you zoom in really closely, you can kind of see it there, right there. And if I turn on the needle points, that might, oh, where they are, here, turn off 3D and turn on needle points. See? Now you can see those points there. That is the lock stitch. And that is something that's good because if you're trimming this, whether it's with your scissor or in the machines trimming it, um, you don't want your threads to unravel. And so similarly on the other side, there is a one, two, three, four stitches to get your thread connected on the other side before it continues sewing. And so that's how you can take control of both your lock stitches and your um, tie-ins or your trims and then the lock stitches. So I guess a lock stitch, another word for that is a tie-in beginning and then a tie-off at the end. So I had said, if you didn't have the ability to change this closest to furthest, could you still do that? And the answer is yes, but what you would end up doing is breaking apart your text. 
And to, when you break apart your text, you now have the ability to, for example, select the T and move the red exit point to be any point you want and select your E and make your green entry point any point you want. And therefore you have changed the distance of the thread between the letters. It's still a dotted line. Um, so we know that the software will put in the trim code, but if your machine doesn't have a trim code command, that is a way to get a further distance. So I hope this video was interesting to some and perhaps a little bit technical for others. Um, just know that if you have questions, you're always welcome to reach out to RNK software support tickets. And so until next week, have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening and bye for now.